तो नमस्ते गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग गुड मॉर्निंग विच एवर पार्ट ऑफ दर्ल्ड यू आर ज्वाइनिंग अ वेरी हम्बल प्रणाम टू एवरीबडी एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम इन दिस फेब्रुवरी एडिशन ऑफ द तत्व बोधा बॉडी माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट the spring has started in, in here in india this is the season of spring basant and it brings the new vibrancy in the environment the flowers the trees everything the whole uh, earth comes into a new look acquires a new look our body our mind our thoughts also it is always acquiring new looks and uh, that is the whole process of evolution which goes on every moment there is a new thought every moment there is a new mind so i wish that this basant continues every moment in our life and we continue to imbibe new thoughts and perform new actions on this uh, thing today we will start again as we start uh, always with the prayer and then we will get into the subject om sahana bhavatu sahano bhunaktu सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मशावै ओ शाति 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 so today we are going to start the most important chapter which talks about destination very few people they get this uh, fortune to talk about this or to be to listen about this only just listening about the self itself is a boon that comes after many many lives of hard work so by that context i consider all of us as very fortunate that we are not just listening we are also going to discuss we are also going to talk about this subject called the self in the last 12 lectures that we had since last february when we started we are almost completing an year now we have completed actually 7 february is february last year is when we had the first chapter we started with the life and then we went on uh, peeling off layer by layer understanding the gross part of the world understanding the subtle part of the world that is subtle body and then we understood the we spoke about the causal world the body mind intellect all the layers which are there which makes us that jiva the envelopes that are created around this very essence of the existence which is the self we have discussed all that and uh, with everything we have come to a conclusion that gross body is not the real thing subtle body is also not real Uh, the causal is also not real the entire matter we have talked about it is not real because it is undergoing changes every moment every time there is a change so these something that changes cannot be the truth because truth remains eternal whether it is past whether it is present or future it will remain as it is constant always one always same that is the truth so this is how the scriptures the great sages in the scriptures have also told you can only discover the truth 
by rejecting the false rejecting the unreal neti neti that is the term which is used that this is not this is not i am not body am i body no you are not body reject then go to the next layer then are you a mind neti neti are you the intellect are you the vasnas neti 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 then who are you that's where you find out that's where the purnata or the fulfillment the the samadhan comes to that place so this is how the study has been prescribed by going with what you consider as a truth and then eventually rejecting it even in modern science many such this techniques is used by proving something um, i remember when i was graduating and there was a subject in mathematics the real theorems and all this was the approach it used to say that okay let us let us assume this is correct and then prove yourself as wrong in the end that's how that whole concept used to work so this moves on the same track uh, this field of study and uh, when we talk about the self it cannot be described in the words it cannot be described in the emotions it cannot be described in your thoughts it cannot be conceived by by in the terrestrial domain so something which cannot be described how we can discuss it how we can uh, comprehend all these things how we can apprehend this reality it is not in our in our capacity as a matter as our mind our intellect our body cannot comprehend this that is why the guru only by the grace of guru one can know this this answer this is something which is beyond experience also beyond the thoughts beyond everything even beyond experience so how can you talk about something which you cannot experience that comes that is the whole thing so today we will do a little bit different here because all of us let us surrender to the guru because when we are talking about such a heavy 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 topic here so let us all surrender to the guru and let us all pray to the guru to guide us to give us a, just one drop of understanding itself will create a wonders for us in our life if we are able to just understand one iota of what this we are so the topics that we are going to touch in this chapter are what is our true nature there are many terms that are used we come to know when we read the scriptures <clears throat> when we go into satsang when we listen to the guru various terminologies we come across people talk about atma people talk about chetna talk about brahma what are these terms relating to are these terms pointing to different different things or are they all pointing to the same entity over here otherwise think we get confused into all these terms we get caught in the web of the words and then we lose our focus from the essence the where we we really what we are trying to understand we have always learned about this term called maya so what is this maya what is the concept of maya okay uh the concept of god and the world which is there what is god what is world we always talk about god is the creator of this world many people believe there is some existence about god many people don't believe in the existence of the god these conflicts exist they have been there from time immemorial and they are even there today and they will continue to be like that because of our different levels of understanding because of the ignorance that surrounds us these conflicts are born into that then what is consciousness 
what are states of consciousness we have already touched about these states of consciousness in our uh, last uh, edition so we, the, the three states of consciousness and the fourth state what is that fourth state we will again touch upon a little bit on that then the personality the stages of the personality when a when a sadhak when a seeker treads on this path what are the stages that come how many stages that come uh, in the path so what we are going to talk in, into this and also we will discuss about nad we have heard about this nad brahm this terminology the shabd brahm the nad brahm antar nad bahay nad we have heard about all this how is nad there what is nad which is there what is antar nad which which is there how can we listen to it and and why why do we uh, try to understand this nad what what ha what it has to do in our journey towards the truth and of course we will end this chapter by praising the self the 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 song of the self the aarti that we do every day the stuti for the god where wherever we have our faith whichever god we believe we have some means of praising the lord so here we are talking about the ultimate god the self so we will have a aarti and we will try to decipher what that aarti what that uh, that means each of the lines in that means it is giving us the path towards the self that whole song has the formula has the path inside it and whatever we are going to discuss is based on the experiences that have been written into the scriptures the experiences that the sages of siddha parampara siddha tradition have given so it's a, it's a blend of all that so through their experiences we will try to discuss here and uplift ourselves and that is why i said only by the grace of guru we can we can try to make this attempt forgetting about the results whether it will get understood or not that is not the matter here but we will make an attempt that itself is a blessing for all of us what we are doing so we have discussed all this what we have discussed so far in the last 12 lectures the body the mind the intellect that is the sansara that is the world that forms this terrestrial part of the world what we have discussed and that is all what is called as non self no self an atma that's the opposite of atma self is atma so what is the opposite of it an atma so between this an atma and atma that is the self and the non self this whole confusion and this whole life goes on by not understanding this self and by considering the non self as the truth we end up into the sufferings we invite sufferings into our life and we go through immense suffering by that the three types of sufferings which are which have been described suffering at the gross level the body level suffering at the subtle level suffering at the ultra subtle level the spiritual that is adhyatmic suffering the adi bhautik suffering the adi dev daivik suffering these are the sufferings three tapas which have been uh, described at various levels the suffering happens and of course the suffering the, the the deeper it is the suffering the more pain it happens and the more uh uh time it remains over there the suffering to the body is having a shorter span life span you will damage your finger or you will damage any part of your body have a scratch it will heal the cells have the uh, the uh, tendency to multiply and heal itself 
so it will try to heal it will heal quickly the pain will be lost quickly you will forget about it. even if the person has a uh, go for a amputation that pain will be there but after a couple of months person will tend to live without that particular body part and the life goes on that but the, the suffering that happens at the mental level, it has a longer lifespan. It keeps on coming again and again and, and disturbs the rhythm of the life. And the spiritual suffering is even more deeper. The same goes with the other side of the suffering also. The pleasures which are, at, which are taken at the body level, they have a shorter lifespan. The lifespan of a pleasure your sensual pleasure, like if you are eating a taste, something of your life, the pleasure will live, remain as long as that particular thing remains on your tongue. The moment it is dissolved, it goes in, that pleasure is gone. And then the mental pleasures, the mental happiness, the mental joy, it has a longer lifespan. Intellectual joy has an even more lifespan and the spiritual joy has infinite lifespan and that is called as eternal infinite bliss and that is what every living thing is is aspiring is desiring to get all our activities in the life is to come out of the suffering and live in the permanent sphere of joy happiness bliss it is knowingly unknowingly Whatever activities we are doing, it is for that sake. Okay, so this is this is our story. What you see, what we see here on the screen. Our story is actually opposite of this. This is what the sages have told that your true self is the Brahm, which is the truth, and this world, which is you see, is just the illusion or the delusion. It is a mithya. They are not mithya doesn't mean something is not existing. It is existing, but it is not real. They are because it is changing. But for somebody who is not having this power of discrimination between what is true and what is real and what is unreal. The natural thing what happens is they consider this jagat as a real. That is where the whole life starts, the activity of the life starts, and the mind becomes conditioned that way. So what is that? We are considering our image as a real. But image is as good just as a projection of it. It cannot be a reality. If you remove the mirror, if you remove the conditions in the between, if you remove the mediums, that image is gone. There is no image. So we live in the, this ignorance of that this world is the truth. And that is where this whole suffering we go through. Ignorance is the cause of the suffering. So the only cause, the only solution to remove suffering is remove the ignorance. As simple as that is the formula, but to apply this, many, many births just go into that. So this is the greatest and greatest of knowledge that can remove this ignorance that Jagat is a mithya. The knowledge that removes this ignorance is the highest order of the knowledge. Let us little bit understand because we have we have gone through, we have read many places about this matter, consciousness, they combine and the creation happens. There are various school of believers are there. There are various school of thoughts, various philosophies that exist in the West, in the East, everywhere. So there are two prominent philosophies. They talk about the duality and non-duality. 
before we go further, I think it is important for us to get a little bit of understanding around this. So dualism, as the name suggests, dual means two. That it is talking about this philosophy is accepting the existence of two entities, which is there. The Purusha and Prakriti. When we talk in the context of matter and consciousness, consciousness is termed as Purusha and matter is termed as Prakriti, the nature, which is the field of creation, the field of activity in which the creation sustenance and transformation that activity takes on. So what it says is, it, it says that these are the two distinct existential real, realities. That means Purusha is the God and rest everything, man, the Atma, what we talked about, the Atmas are the uh, other thing which is inferior to this God. So God is at the top and then these are Atmas, separate Atmas which are there and then these uh, Prakriti which is which is there and, and because of this unison or the, the association of these two, this whole world, what we see, it takes place. And why this world is created? What is the cause of this creation? They say that God has created this world to do the Leela, to do for the enjoyment of it. It is a play to entertain. This world has been created. So that kind of thought goes in this, this school of thought. And after every cycle of creation, sustenance, and the dis transformation or the destroy of the world, everything goes into the deep sleep. Everything converges into one point sleep in the deep sleep of nothingness. And then again, from there, the creation takes place. This whole thing continues like this. Dualism says that three gunas are the climate. In this climate, they form the environment in which the creation takes place, the first seed of creation. If there is a climate, the seed comes and then the seed sprouts from there. When there is a, these three gunas of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, these climate, they remain in the equilibrium. At that point, there will not be any creation. That is the point of deep sleep it is telling. No creation is there. Pralay Kal. Nothing exists at that point. Okay. And when there is a motion, the Rajas Tattva is known for the action. When the Rajas Guna, there is an action over here, the process of creation starts. The Sattva Guna is the light, the white light, which gives the bodh, which gives the knowledge, the sattva, that something is happening, which brings to the knowledge. And tamas is the ignorance, the darkness, which envelops what is happening. So these two are the gunas and the third one, which is having the motion, these three combine and into the creation that takes place. Sattva, rajas and guru. And that's how the Evolution then will start. It talks about the 25 elements which are there, the Pancha Tattva, the Pancha Tanmatra, the sense organs. The I'm When I talk about the world, please don't look at the world around outside. Look at this world. Your own body is a world. Your own body is a thing. We are talking in this context. When we say that everything finishes, that means everything is deep sleep. And when this body is born, the birth is taking place from that seed. The seed which is created by the conjugation of the mother and the father and the womb of the mother in which the seed germinates. Like that, there is a universal seed also, universal womb also of this cosmos. 
from which this entire world then emanates from there. So this is what the dualism, Dwait, is talking about. Now let's come to the right hand side, non-dualism. There is another very important school of thought that is called, called as Vedanta, Advaita. And this is the this is considered as the highest order in the field of spirituality. What it says is, it says that all this, there are no, there cannot be two existential realities. There is only one existential reality, which is eternal, which is infinite and like that, which is causeless, which is timeless. It has no cause. There is no second to it. It's only one thing. And when uh, something is eternal, which is something which is omnipotent, omniscient, which is everywhere, there is no place for the second to exist because one thing has covered everything. So it is a house full, just one person house full, there is only one seat. No two can exist. Then if one existential reality is there, then what is this? It says, what is this tree where what I am looking? This is also truth. This is existing. How can you say that the tree, the sky, the sun, moon, stars cannot exist? That question comes into the mind. There it says that all perceived creation is just a projection of it. It is called as illusion. Advait, this whole image what we are seeing, it is called as illusion. And that is Maya. It is also called as Avidya in certain texts of Advaita. Avidya, ignorance. Ignorance itself has no real, no existence. Ignorance is like a darkness. So what Advaita says, darkness has no existence. What is darkness? It says darkness is the absence of the light. So darkness has no existence of its own. When the light is there, there is no darkness. When the light is not there, there will be darkness. So it is the light, which is the only thing. If it is there, there will not be darkness over there. So anything which is born out of ignorance, that means something, how can something existing can be born out of something that never exists? Ignorance is non-existent. So mother is non-existent. How a non-existent can give rise to something existent? That is the question. That is the logic Advaita is telling. So there can be only non-existent can be born out of non-existent. A cat can only give birth to the cat. A, cannot give, a cat cannot give birth to a dog. A human cannot give birth to a lion or a giraffe or a snake. A human will always give birth to a human. Non-existent will always give birth to a non-existent. Ignorance will always give birth to the ignorance. Only ignorance will be born. And that's how the whole ignorance will spread. That is what the Advaita is talking about. So how ignorance, how this maya, maya can be then transcended when one wakes up in the consciousness of the self. When one wakes up in the consciousness of the self, all distinction and dualities disappear. That means when you remove the mirror, the whole illusions, delusions go away. So somebody who is living in the Maya, that means he is not awoken, he is not awakened. Somebody who is treating ignorance as the truth, he is not awakened, he is sleeping. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, says about this. Ya Nisham Sarva Bhuta Nam. So, something which is night or day for a common person, 
for an ignorant person it is the night for the yogi two opposite things it is talking about again if you correlate the previous image brahma satya jagan mithya for a yogi it is all opposite for a non yogi for a for a ignorant person it is opposite it is jagat satya brahma mithya for an ignorant person so this is the difference we need to understand and vedanta is the considered as the highest order of the knowledge so vedanta is nothing but it is the source of it lies into the veda vedas as we all know they form the foundation of the whole knowledge veda means knowledge foundation of the spiritual knowledge like in every subject when we study physics or whether we study chemistry in university or in school there are certain books which like which becomes a bible for everybody they say that this book you study because this is the bible then only you will understand the subject so vedas have that authority have been given that authority if you are studying the subject of truth vedas are the highest authority which are there and this four vedas they cover the entire field of human activity entire field of human knowledge or not just the the whole knowledge they they cover rigveda the samaveda the yajurveda the atharvaveda which are there okay. so rigveda has the hymns of praise the recitation okay the recitation they do namasmaran okay this this was the earliest form of veda okay then the samaveda has again melodies for chanting mantras chanting uh, music rhythm it goes into that field yajurveda has knowledge of the sacrificial formulas the yagna the fire ceremony and all the yagna then they draw the philosophy of yagna everything is in the it talks about into the yajurveda atharvaveda the various siddhis and the magical formulas the miracles what we call an ignorant person uh, which call those things are all encapsulated into atharvaveda okay so that's how the base vedas are there now out of these vedas various other scriptural branches have come out from time to time like there are samhitas samhitas are like how the vedas have been collected and organized these rims like they have been segregated and uh, topic wise they have been put together and organized uh, so it is a portion of vedas uh, and then the mantras which have been arranged systematically organized see remember these vedas is not written by one like one person vedas are the like people have got this knowledge different people at different times they have got through the shruti uh, they have listened to that antarnada the inner voices in the meditative posture whatever uh, knowledge in the full awareness sages have got based on those hymns and all in those days thousands of years back they have all produce it has been produced so people on the next generation have organized into samhitas so that's one branch of vedas which are there now brahmanas brahmanas are dealing with the rituals the karma kanda the the person at the initial levels of understanding person whose mind has not evolved has not gone where it can apprehend the whole great knowledge like in our schools we have kindergarten then we have primary then we have secondary higher secondary that's how the syllabus has been organized as the student develops develops the understanding the difficult subjects will come on basis of that so karm kandas is like a primary it is like a kg kindergarten and primary school where the somebody who wants to understand this knowledge he goes through this this part depending upon the understanding level so parshurama when 
he was very much into the worldly activities uh, to take revenge he went and killed all the kings who were adharmi who were unrighteous in their actions so he vowed to kill all those kings so he did lot of bloodshed now as a result of that there was some sort of he lost his peace of mind in the end and and to gain that peace of mind he gave up the violence and went to guru abduta dattatreya now he was in that state of the mind where he could not be given the higher knowledge the higher secondary knowledge immediately for the truth so he was given the karm kandas to start jap puja the worships we do right at home like we are when we are kid we are told to light the lamp and and just go some recite some prayer and and that's how the karm kandas go on people perform the yagnyas also at the home so brahmana deals into that karm kand now while doing this slowly gradually as the seeker develops more faith his purity he becomes little his mind becomes little pure his faith develops his devotion develops he uplifts and then when guru identifies that that shishya has developed to a stage where he can be given the upasana he enters into the middle school or the secondary school upasana kand aranyakas are there which has been meant for people who want to reach higher levels of bliss through meditation these practices of pranayama meditation these practices are given today is what we call as kriya yoga and all that where they can contemplate on this on the supreme aranyaka means forest in sanskrit aranyaka word means forest that means people used to retire to the forest and then practice in the solitude uh these practices on on brahm whatever practices the gurus have given them they used to practice in that seclusion in isolation that is why these aranyakas they have been named and then final the last part of the thing comes the higher secondary where the upanishadas which form the last branch of the veda that's why this vedanta this whole thing comes it is the end of the knowledge the last part of the education <coughs> gyan khand so it comes as an outcome of aranyakas from Ar- aranyakas the upanishad the experiences which are gained while doing the practices they form the basis of upanishads so upanishads are the verified sources based on the experience of the sages upanishads are there upanishad means sitting in the uh, near to the guru upa means down sab and nishad means near sitting with near to the guru and receiving this knowledge then guru is the one who has gained the experience now imparts that knowledge to the disciple who is sitting near to him with a surrendered feelings with the devoted mind with the faith with the trust he receives this knowledge so upanishadas upanishadas are the last part which is the gyan that's how the division of these scriptures have been done many scriptures are upanishads are there but about 11 are considered as the authority the real ones are the one with the substance for which the commentaries have been done by various philosophers adi shankaracharya who is one of the shining names in the world of vedanta he did these commentaries in the 6th century ad many of his texts are even up followed today so he did a great job of doing bringing all these things and simplifying this knowledge in the pr- prose poetry form prose form is written so many scriptures and and that's how people can understand this whole vedanta can go to the highest point that is what it talks about that brahm 
that's one element that exists at the self and of course there are vedangas and upangas on the right hand side what you see angas means the parts so parts of the vedas parts upangas they are like puranas which were the in the story form this knowledge has been told many people they understand in the story form right so the even you go the kindergarten or before kindergarten the stories are told by the grandparents and the 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 child the grandchild starts to understand the world through those stories so these stories are like there and then you know they are to make it easier for to understand these uh, puranas are there okay so this is just i wanted to lay out the spread of the scripture so that we understand like you know we have we are hearing all these terms <clears throat> so what we are discussing in this bmi and all in this journey we are understanding from the lens of the vedanta the highest wisdom and uh, many philosophers have kind of appreciated they have endorsed vedanta as the highest uh, source of spirituality and all right whether it is a uh, arthur schopenhauer who was a german philosopher who said that there is no religion or philosophy so sublime and elevating as vedanta upanishads are the production of the highest human wisdom from every sentence of the upanishads deep original and sublime thoughts arise and the whole is pervaded by a high and holy and earnest spirit in the whole world there is no study so beneficial and so elevating as that of the upanishads they are destined they are destined sooner or later to become the faith of the people upanishad will become the universal faith arthur schopenhauer is telling because it is not talking about a person upanishads are only context there is the knowledge there is no individuality there is no monotheism over there it's only talking about that supreme universal knowledge so only something which talks about universal only has the capability or the capacity to become a universal uh, uh focus of faith the universal object of faith universal point of faith max muller also a very famous name we keep hearing right it say he says he said it is surely astounding that such a system as vedanta should have slowly been elaborated by the indefatigable gibel and intrepid thinkers of india thousands of years ago a system that even now makes us feel giddy as in mounting the last steps of the swaying spire of the gothic cathedral none of our philosophers including hercules plato Kant or Hegel has ventured to erect such a spire. He is acknowledging the fact, and none of the Western philosophers, great philosophers, have reached those heights. What Vedanta, what Vedas are talking about. In the beginning, there was but one, and in the end also there will be what but one, whether we call it Atma or Brahm. So he is also said. atma brahm is all one name of the one consciousness it's all we are pointing to that one existential reality sai baba has also very revered spiritual guru uh, he has talked about those vedas and upanishads how many upanishads number which is there different numbers there could be different some said 10 some said 11 some said 13 are the authoritative upanishads so yeah but that figure is between 10 to 13 uh, adi shankaracharya is known to have commented commented on 11 upanishads okay so i think we can we can just spend few minutes uh, on this today or probably this is the we have only 9 minutes this subject we will go very slowly let us 
take this let us just digest this because the more we think the more it will just go away it will it will be very difficult to comprehend because it is beyond our comprehension so i think we have only 7 or 8 minutes left so we can close this session uh with this understanding of the how the vedic scriptures have been organized and how the various schools of thoughts are talking about the existential realities the 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 various beliefs that exist in the various schools today okay so let us do the shanti part and then we can disperse for the day and we will continue this journey in march <clears throat> oh purnamada purnamidam purna purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओ शाति 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 थैंक यू फॉर ऑल योर प्रेजेंस हियर टुडे थैंक यू फॉर योर पेशेंट लिसनिंग i wish you a very good month ahead we will meet next week for any kind of discussions we can have around what we have discussed today or in the past if there is any question we can take up in our regular group discussion session next sunday 4 pm same same time like we started today thank you sir thank you thank you for wonderful session thank you sir